If you're working as a health, fitness, or, or wellness professional and you have clients coming to you with this constant phlegm in their throat and always clearing their throat and why am I the captain of phlegm kind of thing going on, this video is going to help you understand why that situation is happening with your clients and steps you can help them take to fix it. These clients are going to like you. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So clients dealing with this over mucus situation will often experience situations like just having to clear their throat all the time or feeling like they have a lump in their throat, like why is there a squirrel sitting there in my throat kind of a thing. Uh, a lot of them will experience a chronic cough even when they're not sick and then the cough can be significant and hacking and people are like are you about to die because it's such a severe cough a lot of people will have a, a horse or they'll, or they'll even uh, lose their voice altogether and they'll have a horse scratchy voice or it's just kind of gone and i actually lost my voice for eight years because of a, a similar situation so if you want to hear more about that story we'll put a link in the description below about how i lost my voice for eight years it wasn't fun you don't want to do that clients don't want to be doing that when looking at these types of issues, it is possible to have like a sinus infection, a post-nasal drip kind of infections coming down into the throat. And so this mucus is kind of being created to protect the, the delicate vocal folds and, and larynx kind of stuff. A person could have an allergy, that's a possibility. But in most of the cases you're going to see with people having these types of symptoms, it's going to be a reflux type problem. And they may not even have any kind of heartburn at all. You know, they may have been diagnosed with GERD or heartburn, but a lot of times it's like an LPR thing where it's like a silent, it's silent reflux. But I kind of view all of these issues as the same underlying problem. And what they're diagnosed with or what they view or what they feel like they are dealing with can depend on where they're experiencing the discomfort. The, the LPR seems to happen a little bit further up in the throat and vocal cords and in that larynx kind of area where heartburn or GERD, a person might have that burning right there in their chest. And, you know, it can change where the discomfort happens because those tissues can change. If they get irritated for too long up the esophagus, the tissues can kind of change so that they don't get irritated anymore. And then that irritation goes further up and then it's in the larynx. So where this mucus or this lump in the throat or constant clearing or chronic cough comes from is the body's making this mucus to protect those delicate tissues. It's saying, hey, I'm gonna help out. You got a problem here, let me help out. And now the person's like, oh, I'm just phlegmy. How do I stop phlegm? How can I turn phlegm off? Because that's the symptom that they're dealing with. A lot of times that cough is so violent because the body's trying to clear those acids off of those delicate tissues. So the body really is trying to help, but what we can do to help the body is to help the problem that's causing the whole situation. So here's what we want to look at. When we eat food, our stomachs make hydrochloric acid or, or stomach acid. And this stomach acid is there to help us break down our food. It acidifies the food and breaks it down so that we can access the nutrients in that food. So when people are getting that acid coming back up, advertisers tell them, hey, you got too much acid. You got to shut that down. You got to turn it off. You don't want that acid coming back up and burning you. So they take these PPIs or antacids and it turns off the stomach acid and for some people it really relieves that symptom because the acid is not coming back up and burning them anymore. It's not coming back up because it's not there. Problem is now you're not really breaking down your food now are you? But here's the reality of the situation. In most cases acid reflux is not caused by having too much stomach acid. It's caused by not having enough stomach acid. So at the bottom of the esophagus, there's a lower esophageal sphincter, or LES as we call it. And when the food comes in, this sphincter opens, food gets into the stomach, and then the sphincter is supposed to close. That way acid can't come back up and burn us. Here's the problem. That sphincter, that LES valve, is triggered by stomach acid. So if someone's not making enough stomach acid, then that valve doesn't close, and the small amount of acid that they are making comes back up and it burns them or it goes all the way up to their throat and then the body's like hey I'm gonna coat this with some mucus and you're gonna feel like you got a snot face all day. So this is kind of what the situation is that's creating the problem. So instead of turning off the acid more to remove the symptom we can help the body 
make that stomach acid like it's supposed to, restore that acid function, and now if the stomach gets acidic enough, it'll trigger that LES valve to close, and then the acid doesn't come back up. If the acid is not coming back up, the body's not going to need all this mucus to, to protect those delicate tissues. Here's where the problem can get a whole lot worse, especially if somebody's using some kind of antacid situation to turn that stomach acid off. Well, that just turned off your ability to pull minerals and nutrients out of your food correctly. That acid is there to help us start breaking down that food. And there's a reason that we do that. We need those nutrients for the body to function correctly. And if we're not breaking down our food correctly, that's going to lead to mineral and nutrient deficiencies and a lot of other problems. The other thing is that that stomach acid is like the main barrier for the whole body. When we get microbes and little microorganisms coming in on our food, and these little varmints are, are coming in, we can't really avoid that. When they come in on our food, they fry in an acid bath. That stomach acid is our knight in disgusting armor. It fries everybody and kills it so that they can't continue moving through the intestinal tract and into the system. So when we turn off that stomach acid, we're also opening the door and saying, hey, all you bad guys, come on in. Come in, set up camp. You can raise your kids here. We'll have a keg party. It's going to be a great time because there is no barrier. And then as these microorganisms go into the small intestine, we get that whole SIBO situation, the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and all the problems that come with that. So we really want that acid barrier there not only to help us get the nutrients that the body needs, but to keep all the bad guys out. So to correct the phlegmy mucus problem, we really want to correct the reflux issue. Now there are other possible causes for acid reflux, and we'll put a link in the description below this video for our video on understanding why acid reflux occurs. But when that reflux is from a lack of stomach acid, to correct this over phlegm mucus situation, we want to restore the proper acid function in the stomach. Now the steps can vary from person to person, but my book Health Pro Results walks you through those steps and walks you through helping clients figure out which aspects of digestion may not be working correctly and if there's problems, the steps they can take to correct those. Because when this acid function isn't there, it's not triggering these other things that happen further down the line. When this acid is there, it also triggers pancreatic enzymes, it triggers the bile to come down from the gallbladder, and we use that bile to emulsify our fats and properly process dietary fats. And the bile also helps neutralize the stomach acid and create this sizzle so we can really get all the nutrients out of our food. So there's this cascade of wrong that can occur when that stomach acid isn't there. So we help you learn how to restore that function for each client. And the book is available on Amazon, but I'm going to put a link in the description below this video where you can get the whole book for free, not just a few chapters, I'll get the whole book and kind of help you figure out how all that stuff works. We also have a BioI membership that has some done for you courses that you can just give these courses to your clients that walk them through figuring out the digestive malfunctions and how to correct those. You can even sell the courses when you're a member to your clients and then you keep all the money that you make. So you kind of get to figure out what you want to do. And we'll put a link to that membership information below as well. But for a lot of clients, they will have been dealing with this issue for a long time and thinking that this is just the cards they were dealt and they're just kind of stuck with it. And you can really help them correct this nuisance. And it's not only just a nuisance, it's the sign of problems that are coming ahead and some of those problems are significant. So hope that's helpful. For now, check out our playlist on helping clients improve digestive issues. I can't wait to hear about your results.